Hey guys, it's Missy Wolf, and I'm here with Dave Perner from Soul Asylum. I'm so excited, I have to tell you. I'm not nearly as excited as I am. Well, the fangirl might come out, so just beware. Okay. All right. So you have a. I'm throwing the microphone everywhere, guys, sorry. 11 albums out now. Mm-hmm. Change of Fortune. I want to know about the title because it really resonated with me today. Oh, good. Well, we were throwing around millions of titles like we always kind of do. Sometimes we'll make a list in the studio, sometimes. And then we go on back and forth, go back and forth, and then my bass player, Winston, sat down with me and he said, look, enough of this arguing and going back and forth. Let's just call the record Change of Fortune and put it out. And I said, okay. Good. It's not a very exciting story, but that's how the decision got made. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's actually a fun story, though, because, you know, usually, you know, I mean, stories are either longer or they're really emotional, and I think this yeah. one's really fun. That's a song on the record that I think is, it sort of sums up the the mess of music that's on the record. I think it's pretty awesome. I love your song, Supersonic. Oh, thank you. I love, And the video is pretty fun. So whose idea was that? Uh, well... That was the idea of the people who had no money to make a video, which would be us, I guess. (laughs) Uh, But we found this great guy in in, uh, Minneapolis who was really much more fun to make a video on a smaller budget, Mm -hmm. believe it or not. And it was just like, get it done, jump around, have fun, and get out, and like, we'll edit it together and all right mm-hmm. see you later and you know we've spent I don't, up to almost a million dollars making a video and this oh, wow. is just a fraction of that right. sort of cost and it really kind of gets the same thing across it, it does and, <laughs> and, it, and it was it was fun I loved watching it it was really awesome and I, I love that you did a lot of the black and white I mean it's really it's really cool that was his concept <laughs> I, I should really know the director's name right now who directed our video? I think it was somebody named Mark. 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 We love I'm you, Mark. You did a great I'm job. I'm to get, you know, <laughs> give the guys some props here. Hold on, I'm on it. We're, we're going to Google it, but you know what? I have, I have to tell you that we're sitting in this amazing room. We're here at the Whiskey A Go-Go in L.A., and I'm looking at the wall behind us, and it is full of VHS tapes. And I am so stoked about that because I don't see VHS tapes anywhere anymore, no. and I'm like, this is, this is kind of fun. So... Do you ever come up here I like would art? Be surprised mm-hmm. if they were yeah. building a collection of, you know, buses that have VHS tapes <laughs> on them, and like people that work at the club that don't know what to do with their VHS tapes. Right. And uh, no, I'm. You're right though. I don't like, want to put one on. I just know. For I'm the like thrill of sticking it in right? there. Right. I'm like the, somebody still has a VCR here. It's great. I love it. Like, you know, we should we should pop one of those thing. in. <laughs> That's awesome. So what do you have coming up? I mean, I know you guys, you're promoting the, you know, the new album and mm-hmm. all that. So what do you have coming up? Well, we play through the rest of this tour and then we start the second leg. I don't know why they call them legs. I wondered that and too. One goes that yeah. way and one goes okay. that way or something. Or legs. East, west. You're middle. my favorite. I just middle. gotta say, I love it. And <laughs> And then we're going to Japan, and we haven't been to Japan for a little while, so that's okay. always interesting. And uh, like I was saying, oh, I don't know if I was saying this already, but our producer is mm-hmm. moving back to where he's from in Minneapolis, mm-hmm. and uh, I've been living in New Orleans for 15 years, but uh, it's pretty exciting that he's moving back to Minneapolis. We'll be able to work right. and record in a way that is even more conducive to how we work now which is kind of it's kind of like eating when you're hungry you don't right. go to the west coast or the east coast and spend right. a million dollars and it's this crazy right. thing it's like oh i got four slogs let's go cut them we'll spend an afternoon in the studio and uh, then we'll work on them in our home studios and do some background vocals and, i was going to ask if you had home studios because i know a lot of a lot of artists do but then a lot of people are doing all kinds of stuff in Nashville now too like oh, lit right? I mean Nashville is just like this hub for everybody right? so that's interesting to me I mean at, after the studio that I was working at 
in New Orleans closed, mm-hmm. everybody started going to Nashville, and that trend has been going on ever since then, mm-hmm. and it's more and more of a music town than it's ever been. I mean, it's not just country music anymore. It's like everybody that wants to work in a real studio, it's pretty much New York or LA or Nashville. And the bottom line is that it's going to be cheaper to send your band to Nashville. You know, it's a music town. You don't have to be a country music person. Exactly, exactly. And I'm, I'm discovering that more and more with these interviews and the people that I'm able to talk to, and it's great. And thank you so much for allowing us to interview you oh, today, by the way. You're very welcome. I have to tell you that when I was in high school and I was watching Runaway Train, your video was the very first video that made kids, missing kids, stand out, and you gave them a huge platform. I mean, every all kids, everybody was drawn to MTV and VH1, and your video like made these kids, they faces and names and broadcast to millions of people around the world what what was that like for you i know that that was just amazing to me well the initial gratification for me comes from you just said faces and names which is the name of my solo record i did not see that one coming but uh uh well it sort of depends on how you perceive it but the power of mtv at that time was an opportunity to use it as a public service announcement, basically. And it was Tony Kaye's concept, the director. He said, oh, milk cartons, we're going to... And he kind of got the idea from missing children on milk cartons. And as the process went on, you know, I I had to really sort of study the situation in a way that I was spending time with this guy named Ernie, who's the head of the Center for Missing and Exploited Children, and Polly Kloss was in there at that Mm -hmm. time, and I really got kind of emotionally invested in the whole tragedy, and it just, and I I hadn't had a kid yet, but it just seems like the worst thing that could happen to anybody. Oh, absolutely. Um, So to that effect, you know, I, I think it, it raised awareness in a way that was really constructive and positive mm-hmm. and not just, here's our new single and right. we're going to promote our record. It was, it was more of a situation where it, it had a broader reach. Right. And it, it definitely did. And I know people were taking notice all over the place. And I know that the families of those you know, children that, that were put on your video, I know that they just had to have been eternally grateful for your efforts there. That's amazing. I mean, the media can be used for good things, it not can be. just advertising and yes. cribbing <laughs> notes from my favorite pony and stuff like that. <laughs> awesome. You're awesome. Well, you guys, check out their new album. It's called Change of Fortune. And the, the single right now is Supersonic, available everywhere, right? Oh, yeah. All right. You guys check it out now. Till next time. Stay tuned.